If you own an iPhone or an iPad, the chances are pretty good that you've used an app with a table view in it. And a table view is usually just a list of items that you can scroll up and down through, like maybe your contacts app. Uh, and that's done with a table view controller. And they're usually a pretty complicated subject, so we're going to take the very basic look uh, at those table view controllers in this video. So I've created a uh, Xcode project. I've called it Meal Planner. And what this is going to do is it's going to show us meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and the food items for each of that meal, along with a brief description. And they're going to be in a table view controller. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the main storyboard, and I should have a, a view controller there. And I'm going to go ahead and click on it and delete it. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm also going to get rid of this viewcontroller.swift file. I'll delete that, move it to trash. So really, this is a pretty bare bones app. So I've got nothing in here right now. So I'm going to, I'm going to start from scratch. Let me hide my document outline. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to add a table view controller. I'm just going to drag it onto the screen. And you can see that it has something called a prototype cell, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to I'm going to embed this in a navigation controller to help me navigate through the cells. And I probably won't use the navigation controller uh, in this video, but it's a good habit to to embed your table view controller so you can tap on a cell and have it go somewhere else and give you more detail usually. Since this is my view controller, let's go ahead and add a viewcontroller.swift file so that I can control this. So I'm going to go to File, New, File. I'm going to make sure it's a Cocoa Touch class. And I want it to be a subclass of Table View Controller. And so I'm going to call this Food Table View Controller since it's going to show me food items. And this looks OK. I'll keep it in my meal planner group. Now I have a food table view controller. I'm going to make sure that it's connected to this view controller. So I'm going to go to this inspector and choose my food table view controller. So now those two are connected. Before I start working on some code, let's look at a couple of things. I have these prototype cells, and this is how I can configure a default cell. So if I click on that prototype cell, click on the attributes inspector. I can see I have a lot of options here. I can change the style into plain or grouped. Um, plain is just if you have just a plain list of cells. Grouped is when you have cells that are grouped by sections. And we'll talk, we're going we're gonna to do that in just a few minutes. Let's quickly run this to see what happens so far. I'm going to see if we can see anything. You see I had just a blank app. And you can see it failed to instantiate the default view controller because I forgot to set the entry point. So let me go ahead and stop this, click on my navigation controller, make sure my attributes inspector is selected, and click is initial view controller. Forgot to do that the first time. So now let's go ahead and run that. And you can see I have a list of cells and I can scroll up and down through that list of cells. That's pretty uninteresting right now because there is no data for that. So let me go ahead and stop that. And you can see that there can be potentially lots and lots of cells, um, some even thousands of cells. So how does it deal with the memory required to display all that information? Well, iOS is pretty good about um, only showing you what you need to see and keeping that in memory. And everything else is just loads as it needed. And that process is called dequeuing. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. So let's go ahead and configure our prototype cells. We're going to make sure that the style is grouped. And the other thing I need to do is give it a, an identifier. So let me click on that cell. And I have this reuse identifier. I'm going to call it food cell. I'm going to use that identifier uh, to refer to that cell in code. So I'll need to remember that I called it food cell. And the last thing I'll do 
instead of style, instead of custom, I'm going to make it subtitle. And you can see that when I choose subtitle, I get a cell title and then some detail underneath it. So I'll use this for information about the food I have. Okay, so I've configured my prototype cell. And now I'm going to go ahead and start creating some data. And in order to do that, I'll need to create two model files. The model will represent my data. So I'm going to add a new file. It's going to be a Swift file these times. Remember, most uh, model files are, are Swift files. And I'm going to create a food file. Now let's go ahead and do that. All this is going to be is just a simple struct that I'm going to call food. And it's going to have a couple of properties. It's going to have a name. That'll be a string. And it'll have a description. That will also be a string. And that's it for my, my food struct. Just a name and a description. I'll need one other file for this. And I'll call this meal. And I'll make it another struct. And a meal will also have oops, a name property. And then if you think of what a meal is, well, a meal is just a group of food items. So I'm going to need an array of food items as the other part of this struct. I'll call it food, and it will be of type array of food. And that's it for my meal struct. So I have two model files. One represents a food item, and then a meal file that represents an array of food items. So now I can go to my food table view controller and take a look at that. And you can see that, unlike a regular view controller, there's a lot of stuff in a table view controller. Again, this is a subclass of table view controller. There are two methods here that are the bare minimum to run a table view. And these functions are the number of sections. Right now it's at zero and then the number of rows and section. So other than these two default methods that I, I need to have, there are a couple other ones that are pretty handy that are usually implemented. And the first one is this DQ reusable cell. And we talked about DQing as the process by which iOS shows you the cells you need and then removes them as they scroll off the screen. So I'm gonna uncomment this one because we'll need that. And the rest of these, I don't need for right now, for this, for this particular app. Depending on what you're trying to do, you might need one or more of these. There is one more uh, function that I do need, and I need to be able to uh, give my sections titles. I'm going to add one more default method, and it's called table view. I'm just going to scroll down. It's called title for header in section. And I'll implement the code in a little bit. Oops, let me just put return. Since I need to have returned something, I'll just return a blank string for right now. OK, let's try to run this really quickly to see if this works. So I have a blank screen right now, there's not much on it. Let's go ahead and stop this and add some code. The first thing I need to do is provide my table some data to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a menu of options. I'm going to create some instances of my, my meal struct and my food struct and have a breakfast, lunch, and dinner menu. So rather than have you watching me type this, I'm going to go ahead and pause this and then come right back. Uh, with that information already in. 